people want to understand what CERN is, uh, if they would uh, just indulge me for a little bit. They all have a clear understanding of why they're doing it, what they're looking for, and what, what is the potential and the facts that will come out of these experiments. I'm going to make this as basic as possible. I want you all to imagine, if you want to know what CERN is doing, I want you to imagine you come into a world and you find architecture all over the place, buildings and homes and houses, and you think they're beautiful and it's really a big discovery. You find out with the houses, you can house people, you can do many things with a house, with a structure. All of a sudden, after many years, you become curious and you say, what's holding all this together? And you begin to find, not nails that you can take out, but glue that has bonded itself to the materials. And you become interested in that glue that's holding the structure together. And so you're fascinated by this glue and you've tried everything to replicate it. You can't because it's hardened. Glue is hardened. You come to the realization the only way to find out how this glue is working is to break it down to its basic particles. And you have to have that glue in its former state, not the state after it's already hardened, right? So you don't want it in the cured state, the state that you can see. You want it in its initial state, which is a liquid state before it hardens. And so CERN basically is a device that will allow them to examine particles in their initial state, not after everything is bonded together. That's a very simple, simple way to look at what CERN is doing. They're trying to find the glue that holds everything together. It's what they're doing. That's the entire, that's the purpose of CERN. As of now, what has come out of CERN is called antimatter, which was first actually produced, it was first produced in 1955. And CERN is a very old organization but it was produced in 1955 and they found positrons, which are anti-electrons. To understand what antimatter is, I'm going to have to explain the very bare basics of what matter is. And, and believe me, it's going to get very weird here shortly because you're going to begin to see exactly what they're doing. But you have to understand what you're looking at now. The matter, the matter and antimatter are in fact opposites. Now, the matter that we have in front of us, if you take a piece of wood, nothing happens. It's just a piece of wood. But if you set that wood on fire, you have caused a reaction. And then it's, it's in a dangerous potential state. It's active. If you have a battery outside of your cell phone, it does nothing. You put the battery inside the cell phone. The electrons begin to flow. The electrons will flow from one place to another. Essentially, that's what electronics are, the control of electrons. They control the direction, the speed of electrons, which okay. create tiny pulses. They flow or don't flow, flow or don't flow. Those are called gates. Those gates form computers. And with a computer, we can do fascinating things. This is why they did, in fact, take Nikola Tesla's findings, because he discovered some things with electrons and protons that were very fascinating. Electricity within itself is a visual observation of electrons and protons in their active state, non-controlled state. Antimatter is the opposite of the matter that we can control. Antimatter cannot be controlled. In fact, when they first produced antimatter, they had to have a facility to contain it because unlike the wood, where you have to have a reaction to cause it to burn antimatter, you have to have a containment to cause it not to burn. That's the only way they can store it with massive facilities.